Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty, for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us pray the colic for St. Mark's Church. Gracious God, through your fatherly goodness, make St. Mark's a Christian community united to serve others. Enrich our life in Christ, that we might celebrate and share Christ's love. And send your Holy Spirit to give us strength and courage to proclaim the good news of your love through word and deed. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to all Israel, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. 
But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. The word of the Lord. from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to thee, Lord Christ. And the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. 
As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And they went, and they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. Break open your heart and let compassion, caring, and reckless love flow into our community and our world. Amen. As a child, I loved going to Aunt Jo and Uncle Charles's house for Thanksgiving. Aunt Jo always set a beautiful table and the food was wonderful. But what stays in my remembrance is that all of us were seated at the big dining room table. There was no kids' table. No one was excluded. Even the table settings for the kids were the good china and silver. No one was second class. Many years ago, Pam and I were involved with a rapidly growing evangelical charismatic church. There were many new people and families. Few of us had any connection with each other. We all just started going to church together. Each Sunday there were new friends and neighbors attending for the very first time. Come Thanksgiving, Pam and I decided to invite many of these new people who had no local family to dinner. They were strangers and sometimes foreigners. We planned to cook a big turkey with gravy and potatoes and dressings. Everyone else was to bring a big dish of whatever meant Thanksgiving to them. You know, that special dish that ties the spirit and emotions to family. My mother made her special cranberry sauce that glistened like red jewels in her grandmother's crystal bowl. Our associate pastor David brought sauerkraut and pork, a family tradition from his home in Maryland. Oh, what a feast of special foods. We all connected. We formed ties of community and started friendships that have lasted a lifetime. No one was excluded. 
Strangers became family on that wonderful Thanksgiving day. Thanksgiving is more than just food, football, and naps, followed by turkey tetrazzini and turkey soup. Thanksgiving is a celebration of our interwoven ties with what the good earth provides and our interconnectedness with all people, our community. Community is something I never really considered until some years ago, I attended a volunteer appreciation lunch at the Jewish Family and Children's Services in Sarasota. The rabbi prayed for the blessings of community. He quoted a famous rabbi Nachman of Breslov from the Ukraine, who said, man reaches in three directions, up to God, into oneself, and out to others. In reaching in any direction, one embraces all three. Blessings of community. Today's gospel reading from Luke teaches us about community, thanksgiving, and the radical inclusiveness of God's table. The ten lepers were outside their community. They had been rejected because of their disease. According to Leviticus 13, people with a terrible skin condition were required to move out of the community and are to be declared unclean, cut off from God. They must not comb their hair. They must cover their lower faces and wear torn clothes. They're not permitted to work. Their housings and belongings were burned. They cannot participate in society. They were forced to live on the outskirts of town and beg. They must cry, unclean, unclean, if anyone approaches. They must stay a safe six feet distance away from anyone. Sound familiar? Anyone who comes too close or touches them would also become unclean. They lived on the margins of society, alone, outside the community, unable to earn a living, dependent upon others. Worst of all, the disease was considered to be the result of sin. It was a sign of God's disfavor and rejection. Yet, Jesus healed them. Who do we regard as lepers today? The unemployed, migrant workers, people of color, mentally ill, homeless, elderly, people with dementia, the disabled and disfigured, other religions, the other political party, the unlovable. The coronavirus pandemic has further exacerbated this Forced to retreat into our households, we ebbed away like the tide, leaving behind the unlovables. The rejected by the community, people step away from them. There is an end to hugs. There is no human contact. People are alone, isolated, even angry. In Luke's recounting, within this group of lepers was a Samaritan. Now, he was doubly outcast, if you could imagine that. In some translations, he's called a stranger, and others a foreigner. Either way, he is not someone even the lepers themselves would consider a part of their community. As a Samaritan, he was considered by the Jewish people as stupid and low class looked down on by everyone. Their ancestry was not right. Their practice of religion was not right. They were racially mixed, for heaven's sake. Now Jesus was on his final trip to Jerusalem. 
these ten lepers, seeing Jesus and his companions, called out begging for mercy. They did not expect healing. No one had been healed of leprosy in 700 years when Elijah told Naaman to dip himself in the River Jordan seven times. Interestingly enough, Naaman himself was not a Jew, but a Syrian. Now these ten lepers were not seeking healing, but rather some handout, food, clothes, recognition of their humanity. Can you imagine their surprise and confusion when Jesus told them to go see the priests? See the priests? This was what one did according to the law in Leviticus 14. The priests could declare them clean and fit to re-enter society. These lepers would go to the temple at Jerusalem. There was nowhere else to go. Now for the Samaritan, it was another thing altogether. He could not go to the priests at the temple. He was not considered a Jew. He was still outcast, healed or not. No priest would talk with him and declare him clean. He was a Samaritan and still an unclean leper in spite of the physical healing. When the Samaritan obeyed Jesus and was healed, he not only had an attitude of thanksgiving, but he also knew there was no other place for this foreigner, this stranger to turn, but to the grace of God, Jesus. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus, recognizing his turn to God. Then Jesus tells him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Not only was this grateful outcast healed of his disease, but now he was made whole, body, mind, and spirit. He was a member of God's community. There were no outcasts or lepers with Jesus, no unlovables. Jesus made no exclusions. All are loved. All are welcome at God's table. For this, we give thanks. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people follow form six. And peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. 
for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and the unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Dabney, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his commands, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Saint Mark and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. gifts of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people. Let us join in the prayer of the act of reception. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse me of my sins and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me and in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Keep us strong. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.